This is the lecture video for Mrs. Roth's English 1 class at the Lancaster Learning Link. This is the lecture for week 21. Please make sure that you have the following items um, available for you as you watch this lecture. If you need to pause the video at this point and get these things gathered up, please do so now. Just a reminder, next Monday is parent-teacher conferences. So next Monday after class, I'll be collecting your binders and I'll do a binder check on them and then return the binder to your parent when they come for their conference. So please make sure that your binder is well organized according to the handout that I gave you at the beginning of the school year. I wanted to point out one thing from Daily Grams Week 20. If you don't have that with you, that's fine. We're going to do a little exercise here. Um, this was a sentence that you had on Friday for punctuation. The sentence is, we're going into the teacher's lounge for some coffee. There's two words here that need an apostrophe, we're and teachers. I want you to pause the video now and write down these two words with the apostrophe in the correct position. When you're done with that, then you can turn the video back on and I'll show you the correct answer. Okay, what you should have done here is for the word, word we're, the apostrophe comes between the E and the R because this is a contraction that stands for we are. Now that one is pretty easy. The other one is a little more challenging. We're talking about the lounge that belongs to the teachers. Teachers is plural, so it has the S on it before we put the apostrophe. So the apostrophe will come after the S because first we form the plural of the word, which in this case includes the S, and then we either add just an apostrophe or an apostrophe S. Okay, if you haven't completed the quiz yet that I emailed to you, now is the time to do that. So pause the video and complete your quiz and email that back to me. Okay, let's go on to the words of the week for this week. Our words are past and past. Now I'm going to refer the, to these as the first one and the second one. So the first one is the P-A-S-S-E-D and the second one is the P-A-S-T. You'll notice that the first past is only a verb. It's always a verb. The other one is never a verb, but it can be a noun or an adjective or a preposition. So what you have to remember about these two words to distinguish which one is which is whether or not it's a verb. Now the first one, P-A-S-S-E-D, is a verb which means the past tense of to pass. Like he passed the ball to me or we passed by the new school. Now the second way that this word is used, or the second word is past, P-A-S-T. Now that can be used as a noun, an adjective, or a preposition. It cannot be used as a verb. Now as a noun, it means an, his, an earlier historical period. For example, in history, we learned about the past. It can also be used as an adjective, which means of a previous time. For example, we learned a lot during the past semester. Finally, it can be used as a preposition, and then it means beyond, as in time or space. For example, we drove past the library. So there's lots of different ways these two words are used, but the key that the thing you need to remember is that the first one is only used as a verb, and the other one is never used as a verb. Okay, so let's do some practice sentences here. Number one, she passed me on her way to the store. If you need to pause the video so that you can write that down and think about it, go ahead and pause it and then start it up again. The correct answer for this first one is the first past, P-A-S-S-E-D, because it is a verb and therefore that's the one we have to use. Number two, she walked passed me on her way to the store. That would be the second one, P-A-S-T. Number three, Bill was so happy that he passed his test. That would 
That would be the first one, P-A-S-S-E-D. Number four, that verb should be in the past tense. That would be the second one, P-A-S-T. Okay, this one has two. She went past the intersection at about half past six. Both of those would be the second one, P-A-S-T. Number six, when we offered him dessert, he passed. That would be the first one, P-A-S-S-E-D. Number seven, he passed the ball to the other player. Again, that would be the first one. Number eight, his payment on his new car was past due. This time, that would be the second one. And this last one has three. During the past year, I have always passed that sign when I drove past my church. During the past year, that would be the second one, I have always passed that sign, that would be the first one, when I drove past my church, that would be the second one. Okay, we're ready to move on now to spelling words. This week, we're going to go back to rule 484.1, the rule about I before E except after C, and sounding like A is a neighbor and way. Um, you'll be using the table that we've used before so that you'll write your words in the correct column and again the exception sentences are listed there for you. Here are your spelling words this week. Neither, perceive, peace, receipt, received, retrieve, shriek, siege, slay, and species. Okay, open your grammar book to page 36. Remember last time we finished up commas? You'll still be using a lot of them, but today we're going to move on and talk some about using quotation marks. Now, I think most of you know that quotation marks are used to enclose the exact words of a speaker. That's called a direct quotation. So when you have the sentence, John said, the book is very good, the words, the book is very good, are the exact words of John, and therefore they have quotation marks around them. Now, it's important that you realize that you do not use quotation marks for what's called an indirect quotation. That's when you're simply rewording a person's statement and it's not a direct quotation. So, for example, when you have the sentence, John said that the book is very good. Now, John didn't say that the book is very good. Okay, so this is not the direct quotation of John. And therefore, we don't use any quotes around those words. Now, there's some other rules about quotation marks that we need to know. First of all, you capitalize the first word of a direct quotation. So when you have Mary said, the sky is beautiful, the first word in that direct quotation is the, and therefore the T must be capital. Now, if the quotation is interrupted by other words, like saying who the speaker is, the second part of this interrupted quotation should not begin with a capital letter unless the second part is one, the beginning of a new sentence, or two, a word that would be capitalized anyway, like someone's name. So for example, in the first sentence here, light, said the teacher, is coming through the window. So the direct quotation, light is coming through the window, has been interrupted by the words, said the teacher. So the second part of the quotation is coming through the window. That first word is, is not capitalized. 
Let's look at the second sentence here. Praise the Lord, said the psalmist. Sing to the Lord. Okay, now we really haven't interrupted a sentence, but we've interrupted what the psalmist is saying. But this time, the second part of the quotation is a new sentence, and we know that because there's a period right after psalmist. So since it's starting a new sentence, then we do capitalize the S in sing. The third example, if you must stop, said the man, Philip will take over. Again, we've interrupted it with the word said the man, but this time the second part is beginning with someone's name, Philip, and that is always capitalized anyway, so it would be capitalized here. Okay, another rule when using quotation marks is that the exact words of the speaker should be set off from the rest of the sentence, usually by using a comma, but can also be used with a question mark or an exclamation point. So we have this quotation, light is coming through the window, but then we have that interrupted by said the speaker. But notice that the exact words are set off from the rest of the sentence by a comma. There's a comma after light, and there's a comma after teacher. We need both of those commas there to set, off, set it off from the rest of the sentence. And the next one, if you must stop, said the man, Philip will take over. Again, there's a comma after stop and another comma after man. Still have some more things we need to discuss. Lots of things, additional rules with quotation marks, huh? The next thing says that commas and periods always go inside the closing quotation marks. So we have the, the quotation marks around light, and we have that comma there that's separating it from the rest of the sentence, but that comma always goes inside the quotation marks. Then at the end we have is coming through the window, and there's a period. Notice that that period comes before the quotation marks. Commas and periods always go inside the closing quotation marks. We see that in the, the next sentence as well, that the comma after stop and the period after over come before the quotation mark. When you're doing daily grams, you're going to need to distinguish that. If you just write your quotation marks and write underneath it as a comma or a period, I'll have to take off for that because you have to make it clear that the comma comes before the quotation marks the same way that the period does too. Okay, now we'll talk about colons and semicolons. And they're just the opposite. They always go outside the closing quotation marks. So actually this doesn't occur very often, but we need to look at a couple examples where it does and understand it. The first one, the following people will sing Amazing Grace. Now Amazing Grace is the name of a song and therefore it is in quotation marks. But when we make a list like this, we use a colon before we list the people, Sam, Julie, and Chris. But notice that that colon is outside that ending quotation mark after grace. The next sentence, read Alfred Noy's poem, The Highwayman, then write a summary of it. In this case, the poem, The Highwayman, has quotation marks around it because that's how we note the title of a poem. But notice that this semicolon is outside that quotation mark after highwayman. And that's because colons and semicolons always come outside the quotation marks. 